So the question is, can we achieve fizz buzz within the grasshopper working environment? And I thought it would be fun and just a fun little challenge to see how many ways I can do it without taking too long. Plus the way I would do it off the top of my head, as well as a little bit of a challenge at the end, keeping everything as basic as possible within the grasshopper working environment. So no Python, no C sharp. So if you want to jump to that, I'll put a um, time stamp in the description, but let's start off with how I would answer the question off the top of my head, which would be within Python. So a brand new grasshopper document. I'm going to double click the canvas and we're going to create our series of numbers that we want to generate. I'm going to start at number one and we'll put a number slider in case we want to change it in the future. I'm going to count to a hundred. So these, this is our range, our series of numbers that we want to run our fizzbuzz little algorithm over. So three should be fizz, five should be buzz, and 15 should be fizzbuzz. So let's grab under sets, nope, maths, script, start with our Python component. And this is the quickest and easiest way that I would do it without really thinking if I was in a job interview situation or something like that. And someone said, can you do fizzbuzz within the grasshopper working environment? This would be my absolute go-to. Right click on our X input. We're gonna change that to list axis. Won't need to do anything else in there. Double click on the icon of the component. Go to a new line and for I in X. If I by three and I by five, oh, I'm going to put in my is equal to zeros. Then we want to do something. Print is buzz. Perfect. So that is saying that we've only got six items in there that is divisible by both. If I by three equals zero, print fizz. And if I is divided by five and returns zero, remainder, Print buzz. Else, uh, I've made an error here. Else, print. We simply send I. Test. So I think that might have an error. If that 15 is fizz buzz, 21. Yeah, let's put in L, L if, L if, fizz, buzz, perfect, 30, divisible, 45, divisible by both, 99, buzz, oh no, 100, 99, fizz, divisible by three. So that's, that's a really straightforward, easy way. That's like the most common tutorial on the fizzbuzz within Python inside Grasshopper. But we can clean that up a fair bit, I think. And let's, uh, let's just push this one because I quite like Python. So we'll go to another example. Of course, patrons get access to all the code of my tutorials. Let's copy and paste. And if I was to try and sort of teach someone the more grasshoppery way of making sure it's parametric, I would first add on another input. Because what if we want to test our code to make sure it works on others? So I'm going to change X to input, Y to N1 for number one, Z to N2 for number two, and we'll create a becomes output because we actually want to output a list now. So 
create a number slider with three for N1. N1, so we can keep track. We can place that down. Change that to five, and we'll rename that to number two. Okay. So now that we have our little component, we want to send an output list based on the data that we've got in here. Get rid of, we can keep our for loop. And what we want is we want to create a list called output. Just open close square brackets to say I want an empty list. And for each item output dot append. This one's going to be biz three. That's if we're going to say i by n one is less than one, and with a plus symbol, I'm going to say i by five. Not five. We're using n two for number two. Returns less than one. We within bus or simply I. We test this. X is not defined. Where have I put in X? Ah, input. So we've just made it a bit more easy. Now, if, if someone came up or I left that for a couple of years, came back, I could read that almost instantly to see what was happening just by the names, double click, if we change our sliders as well, we can see the code makes sense. So that's that's the what, what was our first one? Our first one was seven lines, and this is two or three, three. Okay, so what about C sharp? So we come back up to our scripts and we grab our C sharp. Let's copy and paste. Let's copy and paste our series. We'll do this one a bit quicker. Grab a panel so we can test as we go. Our output A. Now C sharp is a bit more picky than Python. We're going to want to make sure that we give it list access as well as type hint and let it know that it's expecting an integer. We right click into our C sharp script editor. We're going to first create a new list of type string for output equals new list of type string. Go away, you terrible editor. Now for each int i in our x input, we're going to create some new code, curly brackets, if I am very similar to what we did in our first one with the Python, the visible returns three, result. Ah, I need to generate my results first. String result equals, and it's an empty string. String result is equal to this. If we have I by I five again equal to zero, excuse my bad typing, result equals result plus buzz. Because if we've if we've got fifteen and we've already checked for three, we want to add buzz onto it and not overwrite it. Finally, we have to check if neither are true, and we can check that by simply checking result.length is equal to zero, meaning that nothing's been added to the result when we created it at the start of the list, uh, the for each loop, sorry. Result is equal to i dot convert it to a string using the dot string method and output dot add, and we're simply gonna add our result. Finally, outside of our loop, A is equal to output. Let's give that a test. 
maybe compare it to one of our others. Three is fizz, four is four, buzz for five, six gets fizz, and 15 is fizz buzz. So that looked like it worked, good. But this all feels a little cheap or a little cheaty to me because uh, while we're in the Grasshopper programming environment, you know, we are using C sharp language and we are using Python language, which is really, the question is, can we do FizzBuzz in Grasshopper to prove a point? So let's just try and get rid of external programming languages. Let's pull up our series again. And under script, let's grab an expression. We'll grab our number sliders from our second Python as well. Let's keep the same syntax as we've been using. I've just zoomed in on our expression. I'm going to right click X for that input. And Y becomes N1 and Z becomes N2. We get an error, and that's fine. Okay, so double click the expression window, make it a bit wider for this. And the expression is pretty straightforward to what we've been doing earlier. If input by n1 equals zero and input by five, is not five, we're using n2 equals zero, then we return once again, fizz buzz. So both three and five returned. Then we do another if input by n1 equals zero then we only return this. And another if input by n2 equals zero, we return buzz. And if none are true, input. One more, I think. And input number number, no syntax errors, click OK. It's not red, that's a good sign. We'll drag this panel over with a new copy. And fizz buzz, fizz buzz. See, now that's more grasshopper. No Python, no C sharp, no external language. But why don't we go a little bit deeper and see if we can create fizz buzz only with more of data managed within grasshopper itself which is really when you start to feel like you understand the language a lot better. Okay, so let's copy and paste our other elements up. And we're going to try and do this with, now we're going to do this. We've got our series, put on a panel. We know that we want to divide these numbers, but we want to do it individually. So what I'm going to do, I think I'll start by grafting our series then we can see that we've got a deeper data structure. So each number has its own branch. And we know that we want the modulus. So this is the data that we want to divide. We're going to divide N1 and N2. So just hold down the shift key and put it in and then you've got double data. And then we can see that we're getting our returns. So three returns zero, perfect. So we know that three has one three in it, but divide by five and you get a return of three. So we're getting the data we want, but how can we turn this into a string that says fizzbuzz or leaves the number? What we're gonna do is we're gonna weave in some data. We'll take our grafted series to one, and then we're gonna generate a new panel, which starts with fizz. Make that a little bit bigger, double click, buzz, and fizz, buzz. Right click and make that multi-line data. So now we have index zero, one, two, and we're gonna merge that in with our weave or weave it in. So now we can see that for each branch, we've weaved in this additional data. Okay. Now we wanna use we want to use what's been sent by the modulus. So our return, we're going to use to then select. We're going to use these keys so that we know that if it's three, we want to select fizz. 
uh, 15, we want to select index 3, VisBuzz. So we can convert that into a Boolean. So we know, we have a look at this. We can see true, true, because it's returning not what we want. We want to invert that. So simply right click on the input, invert, and now we can check that for data entry one, number one, it is false. So it's returning more than zero. And then at index two, we're getting true for three, which is exactly what we want. We want to use that data to guess it is divisible by three. Instead of putting in the number three or buzz, we want it simply to transfer over fizz. So how do we achieve that? We've got all the data here. Now we just need to use it, pair it up together. And to do that, key value search. Under sets, set sets, key value search. We can take in our search. We're searching for text. So we're going to simply join our text up here with the join text component. Our values are our weaved data. And the key, the key we know that we've got two. We're using two. So there's a maximum of four different potential keys. So if we double click the canvas and we can simply use false, false, it's false, false, is one, is the number. It's saying that there is no three, there is no five, and there's definitely no both. Then the next one becomes true, false. So you can, you can sort of see the pattern here. True, false is equal to number index one, which is fizz, which we know is for three. Then we have false, true. And finally, we have true, true, which is fizzbuzz. So I right click, set that to multi-line data. Now we can sort of come over here and if we compare this, we can see that our little key, and if we come down to, well, number six, we know that's divisible by three. True, so we should return fizz. So we use that as our key, put that into our panel, flatten our data back down. And one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz. And if we check 15, fizz buzz. Boom. So that is how you do fizz buzz inside of Grasshopper. For those of you that don't know, I do have a Patreon. Uh, I really enjoy making some of these tutorials. I would like to be able to do more. Um, and anybody who signs up to my Patreon, I think the first entry level is just a cup of coffee. If I help you out with your homework or uh, learning Grasshopper or, or robotics a bit better, uh, feel free to pop over. I will make this code and all future code available to patrons. And hopefully I'll be able to start to do this a bit more often. So. Look, I hope you found that helpful.